a great many years ago now, I was uh, working at a very dodgy garage and I saw this beautiful Cortina for sale. Uh, I thought uh, I must have that, but uh, I thought if I ask for it, they're gonna, they know I'm interested in and they'll want a fortune. So I went back and told my son about it and uh, I sent them down with a, a couple of hundred quid and they agreed to sell it to them for 200 pounds, but they wanted 400 pounds if they got it MOT'd. So Steve said, I'll take it as it is. And he, he came back to please the sponsor with this wonderful 1964 Mark I Cortina. I quite enjoyed working for John Carter. I found it very challenging because John, being more of an artist than a songwriter, some of his ideas were really alien to sign writing. Some of the jobs John asked me to do were something like I'd seen in old picture books, uh, really lettering right back in the 30s, much later than 50s and things like I thought I would have to reproduce for him. It was things you might see back in the old Western films, something we might have done on a quick, cheap notice board. But with John, it was made elaborate and it really looked good and it fitted the rides and things he wanted it on. Remember I'd always worked on commercial vehicles which had to look smart and, and straight and easy to read. Fairground work is totally different. People stand there for ages just looking at it. It's not flashing down the road at 50 miles an hour. I'm Sam Wilkinson. I'm a sign writer. I started sign writing in 1950 at the age of 15. On my journeys home from school, sometimes I would pass uh, a garage on the main road and I noticed inside there was a man sitting there painting signs, which I'd never seen before. So I used to stick my head in the door and uh, just watch him sign writing. I didn't know anything about sign writing in those days. I noticed that he used an old fag packet as a palette, although he didn't use a rest stick in those days. Uh, I never really knew his name or anything about him. It was only later in life that I realised his name was Harold Simmons and during a time at work I got to know him rather well. My father was working at a local sawmill as a maintenance man uh, and during his wanderings around the garage is there, um, the, the manager of the sawmills owned a racing car and there happened to be a man there painting the numbers on the racing car. My father would, one of those people who would talk to anybody, and he was talking to the, the gentleman and asked him if he would require an apprentice, as the, his son was interested in an art and very good at art. And the gentleman said, actually I do, because the apprentice I had unfortunately just died of TB. So um, send your son along to see me and he arranged for me to go to Wokingham for an interview, which I, I did, and eventually got the apprenticeship, which was all took place rather quickly, really. My first day at Giles Assigned People, after being introduced to the staff, um, I was presented with a lump of plywood and told to make a pallet. And uh, yeah, this is a pallet I made in 1950, and I'm still using it today. You can see by the build-up of paint, the leaks from the dippers, <laughs> it's got quite a character of its own. On starting sign writing, I had no idea of one style letter from another. After practicing copying other people's writing for a while, I did inquire as to what the styles were called. I didn't get a lot of tuition in this field. My governor didn't want me to go to uh, college at all because it, his idea was he was going to teach me to sign right the way he wanted me to write and not have someone in the college would teach me. I was lucky with Giles to sign people because it was quite an old established firm. Mr Giles's father started the firm in 1909. He served an apprenticeship um, through Hovis who did all their own lettering. Their main base I think was Andover and then he moved to Wokingham in 1909. When I started the firm, the gentleman's name was Richard Giles. 
everyone called him a dick. He was a well-known character around the town. I think he was a voluntary fireman and uh, did lots of other things around the town, including a marionette show which he, he used to run. He used to make his own puppets. And I remember clearing up most of the dirt and dust he'd left uh, in the workshop every morning when I got there because he used to work right through the evening and into the night making his puppets and practicing with them. I bought my first racing bike when I was about 14 which came in very useful once I started work as I had to cycle four miles each way from Bracknell to Wokingham and then back again and then probably back to Wokingham again in the evening for night school. So during this period of travelling between Bracknell and Wokingham I met uh, a cyclist and between us uh, we started the Bracknell Road Club. By then I think I was probably about 17. After riding on most Sundays uh, 150 miles plus, sometimes 200 miles, um, when I arrived at work on Monday and probably Tuesday as well, I was pretty tired. Uh, Mr. Giles wasn't very happy with this effect on me and said that I either got to make my mind up to be a professional cyclist or stay as a sign writer. Well, actually, the National Service came along and saved the day. After National Service, I went back to work for Mr. Giles on a two year improver course, whether it was uh, compulsory or whether it was just a way of reducing their pay, I don't know. I didn't think I really needed a refresher course. After I'd been working for a few years, uh, we had, had started to use Keeps Paint, which was a big improvement from the old lead colours and old decorators paint. It was a proper sign writer's colour, but Keeps Paint sort of revolutionised sign writing as far as I'm concerned because it flowed so easy. After you finished it, you had a good two hours to work on it. You didn't have to keep stopping and washing your palette up every 10 minutes, quarter of an hour. You could work for two or three hours and the paint would still flow. It always lasted well. We had no trouble with the paint fading. Most shops had a big panel up on the side of the wall where we could write on. But I, I quite liked ladder work. It never worried me being high up, working on roofs and things like that. I was lucky because uh, a lot of them didn't like that sort of thing. It was a change being at the top of the ladder writing rather than standing at the bottom like I did when I was apprenticed. When the time came for Mr. Giles to retire, which was 1968, I paid a pound for the name of the company, which was Giles Assigned People. After taking over the company, I had to find my own premises which uh, I found in Oxford Road, two large buildings which were ideal for sign writing. I had to go out and buy a van, uh, which I had, uh, only had a, ever had a car before, and uh, of course we wrote it. Uh, the business grew rapidly. As Wokingham was growing, lots of new firms moving into the area, big transport companies were moving in, and garages that supplied transport vehicles. I also picked up a lot of work from Langs that were building locally and Beezer Homes. One of the things that surprised me and annoyed me was the people I'd known for years approached me to borrow my stencils. For a minute I didn't really know what they were on about and then they got annoyed because I wouldn't lend them the stencils and I had to explain to them that I didn't have stencils Actually, all the lettering and work I did was all done by hand. You would have thought, after knowing me for years, they knew exactly what I did. When I, I first started on my own, I was approached by Bracknell Bowling Club to produce boards and sign write them. A local joiner made me the boards, and uh, I had a few years backlog to do. I think it must have been about 20 years backlog. One day I was writing a traction engine for a, a colleague and he said to me, why don't you uh, do some work for John Carter? So John got me to do one job. Their littering was a lot different to what I've been used to because commercial vehicle 
lettering is just usually one colour, maybe one shade, but with John it was three or four colours on one letter, let alone the shading. So I, I really thought back to what I'd seen and what we'd done back in the 50s and uh, tried to reproduce that. I found it a lot like some of the work I'd done years before with a big, really big lettering, some lettering that four or five feet high, which I hadn't done for years. I'd got back to doing tiny little lettering on honours boards and it was such a relief to be able to work on a big vehicle again and get things flowing. On the doors, where the name goes over in an arc, John Carter in an arc, instead of the lettering following the arc, which would, to my eye line, it would be right angles to the line you're working on. With John, everything was upright. Apart from Carter's work and the honours boards I was still doing, uh, there wasn't a lot of work about. So I just really scratched around and worked for John and a few other little jobs. John approached me and said his son Joby, which I already knew, was about to leave school. And John desperately wanted Joby to be a sign writer. And he approached me and said, would I teach him to sign write? Uh, so we made arrangements and Joby came over to our, my workshop and he worked with me and my son and went through the trade and he learnt it the same way as I did by practising with a piece of glass over a sign that Steve or I had, had written. The main thing with Joby was he had been around sign writers and painters and he knew what the trade consisted of. He didn't think I had stencils like a lot of other people did. He, he'd seen us work and knew it was all done by hand and he had this terrific interest the good thing about Joby taking up sign writing was something I hadn't really thought of. He has carried the trade on, whereas it would have probably, in this area, it would have completely died out. He was a good student, and not only is he running a fair, but he's also brought sign writing to a stage where he's giving lessons, which I find amazing. And of course, the outcome of the lessons, uh, Aaron, who was Job is apprenticed and he's another terrific sign writer and liner and decorator and it has carried on much more than I ever thought it would. This season Joby called me in to help him out on some sign writing on the decorative boards for the chair planes. It really consisted of doing some Roman lettering which uh, I know Joby doesn't like doing too much because it's, it's not decorative enough, it's more of a standard style. So I quite enjoyed doing that. Although I officially retired in 2002, I feel I still want to do sign writing and I do quite a lot of work for the fair still and I do things for relations. I was so pleased that Joby's been doing the lessons and that he calls me back in now and again to help them out when they're stuck, <laughs> which I quite enjoy. It's something I can look back on and think, well, it has carried on a trade which I've been interested in ever since I first saw Harold with his fag packet sign writing in his garage. I don't know, that rambled on a bit, didn't it?